So this video is talking about the volume of a sphere. And you can see that I don't actually have a sphere here. I have a half a sphere, or otherwise known as a hemisphere. Yes? So I'm going to tackle this in similar fashion that we did uh, the pyramids and cones. Uh, I want to think of it as a third grade level. I'm not, notice I'm not making a rigorous proof of this. We are just kind of doing a demonstration. We'll leave the proof for later. Okay, so what kind of object would I need to compare this with. This is a curved surface, so it'd be nice to keep a curved surface. So maybe I should have a cone. Yes, it's curved surface. It's got a circuit, it's got the same base. And I know what the volume of this. Maybe I can, uh, I don't know, but that's, that's gonna be hard. That's gonna be a little difficult. Maybe, well, I can use the shape that I used with the cone. I use a cylinder. Now, how? It's nice that the base is the match, and they do match. Now, how tall should I make it? So, if we want to try to eliminate uh, as many variables as we can, we can choose our height. So, we're going to make it a height that is convenient for us. We're going to make it a height that is the same, oops, excuse me, as the diameter. See that? So, all right. So, what do you think? More, greater than the cone? Same, less than, I don't know. Well, let's go see. So we'll do it the same way. We will take and fill up our hemisphere. Once. Of course, more than once, of course. Right? Twice. More than twice. This time, oh, it has to be pi. That's right, because everything with a circle is pi, right? So it's going to be. This is this is not going to be enough, right? Let's see. And I'm not totally sure if you can see that, but it just goes exactly to the line. If I put my lid right on there, it will fill it up. Oh my goodness, I'm just so close from spewing out the top. So, yes, indeed, it is three of the hemispheres is one cylinder. We have hemispheres, and if we take three of those, we're going to get one cylinder, right? Now the good thing is, we know that this radius here is equal to this radius. And how big was the height? Well, the diameter of this was going to be equal to the diameter of this. So that di oh, that means that it's two times the radius, right? All right, and the volume of this is nothing more than, uh, I'll put another equals here, base times the height, right? So that's area of the base, pi r squared times the height. And how big is the height? It's 2r. So that means this is pi under two are cute, right? And, but that is three hemispheres, right? So if we want the volume of one hemisphere, that would be Oh, I, I wrote this, it was three times, I'll write, get my algebra correctly. Three times the volume of one hemisphere is equal to two pi r cubed. Therefore, the volume of one hemisphere is equal to two pi r cubed divided by three. That's one hemisphere. And if we want to find the whole sphere, that's 
two hemispheres. We just double that. So the volume of a sphere is equal to double that, or four thirds pi r cubed. So those are your two important ones for today. Of course, if you know what the sphere is, cutting it in half gives you the hemisphere. And if you know what the hemisphere is, then you know what a sphere is. Fantastic. Oh, here you go. Not a problem today, right? I give you four pieces. Uh, one with a hem, uh, excuse me, a sphere with a radius of five centimeters, to a hemisphere with a radius of two and a quarter inches. Be careful. Uh, three, uh, a sphere with eight and a half inches as a radius, and four, a uh, hemisphere with a diameter of 18 inches. I want exact and round it for both. Okay, so make sure you give me exact answer, and then round it to the nearest hundredth. Simple and easy, right? All right, see you tomorrow.